In this video, I'm going to look at part of a question from Physics Combined Science Paper 1 uh, on the particles topic. And in particular, I'm going to look at some changes of state and also a six mark question, which at first can seem quite intimidating, but actually um, with a bit of planning is not too difficult to answer after all. OK, here we go. So I've cut out part of the uh, question and I'm jumping into the third section of this particular question, which is about gases. So uh, what this question is asking is um, about what state different gases would be at different temperatures. And it's a little tricky to understand because all of these temperatures are negative. So um, the way I would think about this is by using a number line. So uh, if I imagine a number line here we go I'm drawing that in the middle of the screen with zero over here and let's say um, minus 250 degrees centigrade over on that side so we're getting colder from uh, right to left so let's look at the information that we've been given uh, the first gas here is oxygen it boils at minus 183 so if I make a mark on here, um, let's say about here, minus 183, that is the boiling point of oxygen. Uh, that's also obviously the temperature at which if I go colder than that, it will condense into a liquid. And then it freezes at minus 218. So that's the freezing point of O2. OK, so the next one we look at is nitrogen. Its boiling point is 195. So 195, that's a bit colder than 183. So that's here. So minus 195, that is the boiling point of nitrogen. And then it freezes at minus 210. So that's here. So minus 210, that's the freezing point of nitrogen and then finally we've got carbon dioxide which sublimates at minus 78 so sublimation is going straight from a gas to a solid minus 78 well that's a lot warmer than these temperatures I'm going to put that over there minus 78 so the question says a scientist cooled the air to a temperature of minus 190 degrees and then what state is each substance going to be? So we're interested in a temperature of minus 190. So where are we? There's minus 183. There's minus 195. So we're kind of in between. We're here. So on our line that we've just sketched out, minus 190 is that place there. So we've got to think now which state each thing is. So oxygen at minus uh, 190 well it's colder than the boiling point of oxygen so if you think about it that minus 190 is too cold for oxygen to have boiled into a gas uh, but it's too warm for it to have frozen here's the freezing point of oxygen we're in between the freezing point and the boiling point so that means that oxygen must be a liquid in this state um, and then the next one is nitrogen so uh, at minus 190 we we haven't got quite cold enough uh, to for the nitrogen to condense we're above the boiling point of nitrogen nitrogen's boiling point is minus 195 and we're warmer than that we're at minus 190 I say warmer 190 is obviously minus 190 is obviously very very cold but still warmer than 195 so that means the nitrogen is going to be a gas at that temperature and then finally the carbon dioxide okay carbon dioxide solidifies at minus 178 so all the way down here at minus 190 carbon dioxide is definitely a solid okay so just one final point about this question you notice that it's two marks and you've got to do three things so in this question you need to get all three of those ticks in the right box in order to get two marks um, if you get one tick wrong, you'll get one mark. If you only get one tick right, I'm afraid you get no marks at all. Right, let's move on to the six mark question. So um, that six mark question is uh, relating to internal energy. Uh, internal energy 
um, is the sum of two parts. It's the kinetic energy of the particles, so that's to do with their movement, and the potential energy of the particles, and that's to do with the arrangement of the particles. So if we've got a substance which is changing temperature, then what's happening is the kinetic energy of the particles is changing. If we've got something that's changing state, like going from a, say, a solid to a liquid, then we're talking about a change in potential energy. The kinetic energy is staying the same, the temperature does not change, but the potential energy of the particles is changing. Okay, so let's look at the question itself. Every single science paper that you do will have a six mark question on. And when you look at them, they look pretty intimidating at first because there's all this space to write in uh, and that's and obviously it's six marks. Now, six marks, you know, it could be the difference between one grade and the next one. So it's really worth putting some effort into preparing for these questions. And there's a strategy you can use to answer these questions well. And let's look at the question a bit more closely. I, before you start writing, you must plan these questions. If you're going to get a good score in a six mark question, a, a clear plan is important. And I often say to students, use the space around the edge to write some kind of bullet point plan before you write anything else down. OK, let's have a look at the question a bit bigger on the screen. So it says here that um, it's talking about argon. So they're cooling down uh, uh, some air containing argon from 20 degrees C to minus 190 degrees C and the argon changed from a gas to a liquid to a solid. Okay, so we've got two changes of state here. We've got a change of state from gas to liquid and then we've got a change of state from liquid to solid. Okay, and then well, what do we need to say? So the command word in this question is explain. Now, explain means give a scientific reason for something. So I'm going to expect to see the word because appearing at several points in your answer. So there are, there are more clues. It says explain the changes in the arrangement and movement of the particles in the argon as the temperature of the air decreased. So there's, some, there's some, lots of clues here. What we've got to talk about is what happens to the gas as it cools down. And in particular, we need to talk about the change of state from gas to liquid and then another change of state from liquid to solid. So that's kind of two paragraphs. We could talk about going from gas to liquid and then we could talk about changing from liquid to solid. And in that paragraph, we need to explain. So that's giving a scientific reason for uh, we need to talk about the arrangement and the movement of the particles. So within each of those two paragraphs, we've got to say about two different aspects. How are the particles arranged and how do they move? Now, these six mark questions all have a very similar mark scheme. Look, here's the mark scheme for this question. When it's marked, the examiner will read your whole answer and will decide which level it's at. Level one, level two, level three. So often we'll start with level three. The examiner will read it and say, is it level three? If it's not, then they drop down to level two. And if it's not, they drop down to level one. And honestly, where it says no relevant content, if you write even just one thing, any one st correct statement that's relevant to the question, you'll get a mark. So it's always worth having a go at these six mark questions, even if you are a little bit phased by them. Right, so what does a level three quest answer to this question look like? Well, it's got relevant points, reasons and causes, because look, explain, we've got to have a reason for what's going on. And it says given in detail and logically linked. Now that's really important. That is a common thread to all of these six mark questions is about putting things in a logical order. That's why writing a plan will pay off. And also, to get your six marks, it's got to be in detail. So if you've written in detail and it's logically linked, then you have to get either five or six marks. That's a level three answer. It can only be five or six marks. OK, so let's just look at the difference between level three and level two. So again, look, relevant points, reasons and causes are identified. And there are attempts at logical linking. 
the resulting account is not fully clear. So you notice the in detail bit is missing there. So it, the difference between level two and level three is about the amount of detail. And it's also look about this logical linking. If it's not that well done, then you're on to level two. If you get level two, which should be accessible to most students, you have to get three or four marks. So I think most students should be able to pick up three or four marks on these questions if you follow my advice here and plan your answer carefully. OK, so let's have a look at how we can plan out the answer to this question. So remember, we're looking at talking about the change from gas to liquid and another paragraph talking about liquid to solid. So two paragraphs and within each paragraph, we've got to talk about the changes in the arrangement of the particles and the changes in the movement of the particles. And I know that that because I've looked at the question and looked carefully at the words in the question to unpack exactly what it is the examiner is wanting us to write. OK, so uh, here's here's my outline plan. I've put it in the form of a table. Obviously, you wouldn't have time to do that in the exam. Uh, if it was me, I would be writing little bullet points somewhere in the margin just so that I've got a plan and it will guide my writing when I write my answer. So the first thing is we need a kind of introductory sentence. So I'd write something like this. As the argon cools, the particles slow down because the internal energy has decreased. The kinetic energy of the particles decreases with temperature. There's our opener. Right, so you notice, look, I've, I want to write about the arrangement of the particles and I want to write about the movement of the particles. And the first paragraph is about our change from gas to liquid. So what can we say about the arrangement of particles when we go from gas to liquid? Well, the first thing we can say is that when we go from gas to liquid, the density of the argon increases. Here's our because, that's our scientific reason. The particles change from spread apart to touching each other. So when we go from gas to liquid, when we condense, the particles start out, they're spread apart, and then they end up close together. So that means we've got an increase in density, right? So there's the first sentence. What else can we say about the arrangement of the particles? Well, um, we can say that the particles move together because the potential energy of the particles has increased. Remember what I said about internal energy? During a change of state, the um, kinetic energy of the particles stays the same, but the potential energy uh, decreases. That's wrong there. That should say decreased. OK, what else can we say now? We're going on to talk about the movement of the particles. So in our first paragraph, we're talking about arrangement. Now movement. So the particles move more slowly, so the movement is slower. Why is that? Because the kinetic energy of the particles decreases with decreasing temperature. OK, right, second paragraph, liquid to solid. So it's going, it's now uh, freezing, isn't it? So we talk about in a liquid, the particles uh, have a random arrangement and they, um, at what? They, they move then to a regular pattern in a solid. And why is that? Because the forces between the particles have increased. Because those forces stop the particles from being able to, to move around each other, the, the, uh, the object becomes a solid. Now we talk about the movement. The particles change from freely moving to moving in uh, vibrating in fixed position. So they're not able to move from place to place, but they're moving in the sense that they're vibrating. And why is that? Because the forces between the particles have increased. OK, so here we can see then um, I've got this table which just helps me to organise the ideas in my head. And I've got two paragraphs. The first paragraph about uh, as the liquid changes from gas, sorry, as the substance changes from gas to liquid. And then the second paragraph talking about from liquid to solid. And within those paragraphs, you can see I've got sentences that talk about both the arrangement of the particles and the movement of the particles. I need both for a level three answer. So you can see in six sentences, I could get a really strong answer to this six mark question. OK, thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.